Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, well, I'm Sayaka and today I'm dealing with this Commodore 128 which was sent in for repair but actually a few screws are missing on the back and also the power supply is making a strange noise. It's hard to believe that this model was introduced 40 years ago. It was a real engineering feat for its time with two CPUs, an 8502 and a Z80, support for both 40 and 80 column tags and three operating modes including full C64 compatibility. But before testing it, I also want to open it up to see what kind of work was done on it. There are just six screws in the back and then I can open up the case, even though I've already noticed that the one here on the middle is missing and also the sticker is a bit ruined. Whoever put these screws back in place last time didn't do a great job since the case over here is a bit open, so let's see how it's inside. And as always, I want to remind you that my videos are based on my personal experience and should not be interpreted as tutorials. Certain repair procedures involve Involved handling internal power supply components that might retain an electric charge. Do not attempt to replicate my actions without the guidance of an expert. It's really dusting here, it doesn't look like someone used compressed air or actually anything else to clean the board. And there's also a spider in here so big that if it were still alive, I definitely would have had a chance to become Spider-Man. So I'll have to clean the board. I don't know if it works or not since I haven't tested it yet, but before powering it on, I want to have a close look at the board with the microscope. Well, there was definitely some work done in this area over here on these two capacitors. And if it wasn't for the left or reflux and the fact that they scratched the board in such a messy way, I would have thought it was done during manufacturing. Maybe it was, but then they decided to replace them. I don't know what kind of repair was done on this Commodore, I just know that it was sent to repair a couple of weeks ago and then the previous owner noticed that something was wrong because a few screws were missing on the back and also the power supply is making strange noises so definitely there's something moving inside. I also noticed this capacitor over here, it's completely broken, I'll have to replace it and also this one over here snapped on the tip. I want to replace the old thermal paste in these chips because it's dry and also on this chip over here it went a bit on the side so I'm afraid it can make contact so I'll clean the old one and replace it but before doing that I also want to take the board outside and clean it with some compressed air to get rid of all of this dust. I also want to clean this area with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. It's really dusty and there are residues of plugs and other kind of dirt, so it definitely needs some cleaning. I'm not sure if someone spilled something on the connector, but it's really dirty. It looks a bit corroded. Hopefully, it will go away. And now that the board is clean, I want to replace these two broken capacitors. I already marked the ones I need to remove. I'll just use a bit of flux over here and the soldering wick to absorb all the solder. It was really hard to find a replacement for these capacitors. I even called a few stores in my city, but they didn't have them. I luckily found a seller on eBay, but I was just able to buy three of them. I wanted to do a full recap, but unfortunately 
I wasn't able to find more than three pastors. So I have to wait until I find them and then I can do a full recap of the board. But for now, I'll just replace these broken ones. And it was completely destroyed. So I really needed to replace it. And after cleaning everything up, I installed the new capacitor, removed the other damaged one, tossed it in my Pac-Man back capacitor container and replaced that one too. So I replaced them, but as I said before, I couldn't do a full recap since I couldn't find enough replacements, but for now I'll just replace all the electrolytics just to be safe. But before doing that, I also want to thank today's sponsor PCBWay. They offer many services including 3D printing, injection molding, custom PCBs, assembly and many other features you can explore on their website. Whether you're building something simple or complex, you can customize every detail, you can choose the exact size layout and shape you need and even decide on the details like the solder mask color and how the traces will look. Their website also has a big community where people share all kinds of cool projects. Many of these projects have a great retro feel and I often spend time browsing through them to find inspiration or just to admire the creativity. So if you're interested I'll leave a link in the description below and now let's replace these capacitors. And now that everything is clean, I'm going to replace the thermal paste. It's always hard to put the right amount of thermal paste. It always looks too much. And now all I have to do is to put this part back. I took care of everything that looked like it could have a problem. I also checked the back of the board to see if maybe some solder joints were in a bad shape, but I didn't find anything strange apart from some blobs of solder. So at this point, I'd move on to checking the PSU. Usually there are four rubber feet on the back and they're actually pretty hard to remove without damaging them, but in this case they're missing. So I'm guessing someone already opened this power supply and I don't know if you can hear it, but something is moving inside. It might be a component making contact where it shouldn't. So before testing the voltage, I want to open it to see what's moving. Here on the inside, there is this piece of plastic and I think it's part of the support for the screw over here. So I'll have to put it back later. And I guess I have to blame him for all of that noise before. And one screw is missing over here near this yellow capacitor and the black one looks a bit swollen but nothing concerning so I'll just remove the board from the case to get a better look. Looking at the board up close I'm still convinced this capacitor is swollen so let's check if it's shorted. Someone has definitely worked on this board before. I'm not a fan of these solder joints. I'm not sure if these two make contact and if they should, but let's check the capacitors. Let's see. Mm. Well, they're not shorted, but I'd rather remove them to check their values. I've got these spare capacitors that someone really kind bought for me from my Amazon wishlist. I'm going to replace them anyway, but just because I'm curious, I want to test these capacitors to see if they're really bad. 
This should be a 2200 microfarad capacitor. It's a bit swollen. And it says 1500 microfarads. So it really needed replacing. Let's see this one over here. It should be 4700. And it says 5400 microfarads. So let's replace these capacitors. Just to be safe, I'll test the Commodore with my power supply. In that way, if I'm having any problem, I'm sure it's related to the computer. And if everything works fine, I'll test it with its power supply. And now let's see if it works. I really hope so. It works. Let's see if the Commodore 64 version also works. Well, it seems to be working. The keyboard also works. So let's test the Commodore with its power supply. And the Commodore works even with its power supply. So for now, this video ends here since everything is working fine. As always, I hope you liked this repair. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you ever had a Commodore 128. And also if you have any advice on where to find those ceramic capacitors because I really want to do a full recap. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to my Patreon page and see ya in the next video. Bye!